Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Dinosaurs Will Die Perry. That's right, Frederick Perry's Pro Model. This board features Dinosaurs Will Die's Am Camber, which is completely flat to a very micro rocker right before the up kick in the tip and the tail. This is gonna give it a well broken in feel and make it easy to snap and pop with, but with that little bit of rocker, it's just gonna take off that edge bite out of the contact point, which will make it a little easier for edge to edge transmission, as well as if you get into some fresh snow, it's slightly elevated, so you're gonna get a little bit better float, not much, I mean, it's, it's like this much space, so yeah, there's that. This board is available in 150, 153, and 156. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a day that had overcast skies, light snow falling, slightly warmer temps. There was fresh corduroy with little hints of ice here and there in it. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. This board comes in with a flex pattern that's closer to floppy jib noodle than jib deck with pop. You got these immense sweet spots out in the tip and the tail with a lot of flex in it. And then through the insert pack, it's ever so slightly stiffer. I mean, ever so slightly stiffer. It's almost a uniform flex with a great amount of torsional flex. I mean, you can really twist this board. Now, when it comes to stability, keep those knees bent and be prepared to feel everything because whatever flap you get at the tips is going to resonate back underfoot in rutted out terrain, it does get bucked around if you're not paying attention. You wanna stay on top of it and understand how to pump all the variations in the terrain. With it being predominantly flat, it has a skate-like pop to it, which means you don't have to load it up, but what you do when you bend it back and just push off that tail to get in the air is what you're gonna get out of it. So if you wanna go a little higher, a little bit further, put more pressure into it and suck those knees up because that's the only way you're gonna get to go farther or higher with it. Basically, it's a jib stick without pop. And when it comes to jumps, you really wanna keep it to the small to medium-ish features. I use medium-ish loosely in there. It's not what this board's designed for. The lip ends up throwing this board more than any type of pop you could get out of it. So once again, be prepared to bend those knees when you're coming off the lip and getting in the air. Here's the thing about this board. With it being so soft, it's easy to butter. I mean, you got this immense sweet spot out in the tip of the tail that just locks in and you can hold it, but you can overpower it. So you have to know when to put the limiter on this thing because if you get too far over the nose or tail, the board's gonna buckle on you. That's just how it rides. That's not a bad thing, it's just what it's for. I mean, you get sideways, you're doing your butter variations and whatnot. Just understand your edge control and your power shifting dynamic with your weight. Otherwise, yeah, you overpower it, as I've already said. Now, when it comes to jibbing, it's the same thing. You can overpower this thing and fold it on a rail. So you wanna be a little more calculated and kind of keep your flexing for a nose or tail press more towards the inserts, like just ever so slightly out there instead of having your weight way out in the nose or way out in the tail. And when you get sideways, this thing fully hugs around a feature. I didn't get it to fully clap out, but if I had wanted to, I probably could have. It just caresses itself right around that feature and you feel it wrap around. And any pop that you get out of the end of the feature, that's all from you. It's not from the board just being designed that way, it's all what you put either your front foot or your back foot or however you want to just snap out of the feature. Surprisingly for a jib stick, it can actually hold an edge, which blew me away. But what you got to understand with this board is short, quick carves or mellow ones are really a strong suit. It's when you're trying to drive this thing from the back foot through the tail, you'll fold it you have to understand that you will more than likely fold it till you figure out exactly how much power you need to put into this board to drive it on edge, which is like next to nothing, seriously. Any power, you overwhelm this board. It's a board that's designed for going in, hitting rails, and the only time you're turning is to set up or to get around someone realistically. It's not for railing hard carves. It's not for just going out and ripping a turn. It's 
for being really calculated with how you're going to maneuver around things. It's a board that's just soft and playful through and through. So who's this board for? The Jib Influence Park Rider, obviously. This is for someone that's hitting rails. Probably more urban rails than actually in a terrain park or someone that's riding a small little Midwest hill and hitting a lot of rails. So the last time I rode this board, it had actually been twisted coming out of the press, so it didn't ride right, but the flex was stiffer. So switching over to Playmaker, this board has gotten a little bit softer. It still has some slight pop to it, and I mean slight, which is, makes it not a full-blown jib noodle. But overall, this thing has limitations. You realize that when you get it on edge, you realize that you can't do everything with it, and that's fine. That's what this board's for. It's designed for hitting rails. And in that regard, it's absolutely amazing. For me as a rider, this really isn't the type of deck that I would gravitate towards, but at the end of the day, it's not a bad board. Comparable boards. The Battalion Global Warmer, the Rome Artifact, the Capita Scott Stevens. This has been my review of the Dinosaurs Will Die Perry. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not going to miss any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.